Beat. Hello everyone, you're welcome to my channel Peace Old TV. Yes, I recently changed my channel name from Peace TV to Peace Old TV. And for those of us who are wondering why I did that, um the video uploaded before this video has the details. So in case you intend to start up a YouTube channel, I will encourage you to kind of watch that video so that you could learn from that. And um, in my last video, we talked about the beauty of a godly woman. That is what through beauty entails. Because what the world tag as being beautiful may not all the time be beautiful in the sight of God. And of course, if a beauty is not pleasing in the eyes of God, I don't think that is beauty enough. And um, at the end of that video, I, I informed us that in my next video, I'll be discussing the topic, outward beauty not enough. Yes, it's not enough for you to be beautiful and gorgeous and good looking and attractive on the outside. And yet you are ugly and so misshapen and misfit and repulsive on the inside. Like it's of a necessity that a woman develops her inner beauty is very important and whenever we talk about inner beauty what first comes to our mind is character like she has good character and so she is beautiful that's not so wrong but the truth is inner beauty is more than just having a good character inner beauty has to do with what you can give what you can offer the bible says in first Peter chapter 3 verse 3 there do not let your your beauty be merely outward by arranging the hair, putting on your gold, and putting on your fine clothing. But let it be the hidden person of the heart. An incorruptible beauty with a gentle and a quiet spirit that is precious in the sight of God. An incorruptible beauty. Listen, as a woman, your beauty, the outward beauty, corrupts with time. As you enhance in age, your beauty begins to fade off. I'm talking about the outward beauty. It begins to fade off. Situations and circumstances can also corrupt your beauty. Let's say, for instance, anybody that um, gets involved in an, in an accident, like a fire accident, you agree with me that that person will never remain the same again physically, no matter what. There's this picture I came in contact with in a friend's WhatsApp status, and I decided to share to you guys. That's the picture you are seeing right now. You can see that the man in that picture is holding his wife that was involved in a fire accident. Um, the picture below is a picture of the woman before she was involved in that accident and you can you can realize that there's a big difference see the way she's looking now her husband was asked why didn't you leave your wife and he responded i did not marry her body i married her soul that's inner beauty you see even when this um, woman lost her outward beauty even when um, her outward beauty got corrupted by an accident it didn't stop her husband from wanting to be with her now this is because our beauty can, can only um, win the attention of the eyes. Our beauty feeds the eyes. But inner beauty feeds the heart. Inner beauty wins the attention of the heart. Inner beauty can win you the apartment of the heart of a person for a whole lifetime. You agree with me, there are certain people that you just met once in your life and at the moment you cannot really remember the kind of hairstyle they made or the kind of makeup, the color of the lipstick they were wearing or the color of the, of the dress they were wearing. But one thing is certain, you will never forget what they did for you. It's important that a lady develops her inner beauty. It's of a necessity. Now listen. It's for your own good that you develop this inner beauty because whatsoever um, you or whatsoever you amount to in life and whatsoever person you intend being uh, in the society in the nearest future and um, whatsoever number of people you intend influencing positively in your lifetime is tied down to who you are. It's tied down to the stuff you are made of. And in this vein, I'll be giving us the six attributes of inner beauty. What inner beauty entails. So that when you see a woman that has inner beauty, you will appreciate her. Or if you're not watching this video and you have such a woman in your life, please appreciate her. Because it's not easy to have these six qualities that I'll be listing. And if, if you're also a lady watching this video and you lack any of these attributes, and my dear, if you ask the Lord diligently and sincerely, he's going to give it to you. So number one I'll be talking about is ability to be submissive. Now, submissive is gotten from the word submit. And to submit means um, to yield in humility, to let down, to lower, to be obedient, to be humble. That's what submissive means. 
And now, um, it's not um, a very easy thing to be submissive. Submission is not easy, especially when it comes to, um, when it has to do with a lady who has acquired much wealth, a lady of fame, a lady who has attained so many accomplishments, a lady who, um, who is, who is always ad um, addressed as like, yes, madam, okay, madam, yes, ma'am. It's not so easy for such person to be submissive. And then for a woman who is always scolded and not appreciated, it's not so easy for such person to be submissive. But the truth is, it pays to be submissive. You see, what submission does to someone is, submission has a way of melting the heart of people. Like, no matter how hard somebody might seem to be, at submission, that heart melts down. That's what submission does. And like I said, it's not easy. And so if you have a woman in your life who is submissive please appreciate her please love her because it's not easy and as i would say um should i be submissive to that man who beats me who punches me that useless and god forsaken husband that good for nothing boss of mine should i be submissive i have one answer for you and that answer is yes you must be submissive as a woman i did not say should you must be submissive is a must thing to do as a woman and this is a result of the of the position we have been placed as women when compared to the men. We are expected to be at the red positions as helpers, and the men are meant to be at the lamplight, not you. Now, I'm not saying that um, a woman should not aspire for a top position in the society because today we have what changes and what lead us as women. But in as much as the Lord has by His grace helped you attain such position and, and such status and such fame, you should not forget to show respect, like show some respect and honor to that man you are under, that authority that has been placed above you. Respect in submission. Show respect in submission. The Bible says in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 12, that um, I do not permit a woman to teach a man or to have authority over a man, but to be silent, for Adam was made before Eve. The Bible also says in 1 Corinthians 14, verse 13 to 35, that and the women should remain silent in the churches, for they are not permitted to speak, but that they should be submissive as the law demands. And that if they have any questions to ask, they should go home and ask their husbands, for it is shameful for a woman to speak in the church. Now, it's not trying to say that women should not speak in the church, but this portion of the scripture is trying to remind the women of their position when compared to the men, trying to tell us that that we are meant to be at the rear while the men are meant to be at the lamplight. The Bible also went further to say in 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 3 that um, the head of a man is Christ and the head of a woman is the man. This is not an easy thing to do, but this is what is expected of us to do as godly women. This is inner beauty. The Bible says in Ephesians 5 verse 22 that women should submit themselves to their own husband as unto the Lord. No wonder in 1 Peter chapter 3 verse 6, the Bible says, Sarah obeyed her husband Abraham and called him my Lord. She addressed her husband as her God. That is how we're supposed to be. Look at that same Ephesians chapter 5 verse 23 to 24. The Bible says that the husband is the head of his wife, just as Christ is the head of the church. And that just as the church subjects itself to Christ, so should the wife subject herself to her own husband. You are meant to be submissive. The Bible also says in Psalm chapter 45 from verse 10 to 11, O daughter, incline your ear and listen. Forget your people, forget your father's house, so that your king, your husband, can desire your beauty. Worship him because he is your Lord. Your husband is your Lord. You must worship and reference him. This is scripture. You must reference him. With all humility and submission, whether your father is the president of Nigeria, or your father is the governor of your state, or your father is a senator, or a soldier, or an army, you must submit to the authority of that man you are under. You must reference and obey him. It's not an option for you, my dear. And that is why you should be very careful as a woman in making your choice of a husband. I will not forget to mention that point. And I will also not forget to say that submission does not turn you into a yes, yes woman. Like even when you know that that decision is about making is a wrong decision. Okay, I want to be submissive, so let me just say yes. It's not all the time you say yes. 
you need to also give your own opinion and suggestions in humility don't forget that it's not by quarreling and shouting you are creating more problem for yourself it's not left for him to decide to accept your own opinion or decide not to accept it if he accepts it fine if he doesn't accept it you go back to god and pray pray that he makes the right decision because if it turns out well of course you benefit being a woman in his life you will benefit and then submission does not end them in only your husband and um, it still boils down to that your boss in the office that your madam that woman you are working for those above you those in authority you should be submissive to them i remember it pays to be submissive submission is one of the attributes that the shows that we possess in our beauty Okay, now we are done with ability to be submissive. We'll go to the next point, and that is ability to be kind and compassionate. To be kind and compassionate means to you, to pity, to easily show mercy, um, to feel someone's pain, to want to share in someone's pain, in, in someone's mischief and agony. Like um, you want to show concern for someone, you want to show care, you want to show love, even if it means you're giving up your last. Like you just want to put a smile on someone's face. A woman who, who is kind and compassionate um, will not see someone who is them hungry and have uh, food in her pot and will not want to feed that person. She will want to feed that person. Like she is not greedy she's not self-seeking um um she want to share like so long as it's going to make that person feel comfortable she just wants to do that and um it pays to be kind and compassionate also an example of a woman that um that possessed the the, the quality of being kind and compassionate is tabitha in the bible like um tabitha was a woman that was known for her good works like she gave out arms, she fed those around her, she clothed those that were naked, and did it pay her? It paid her. Like, she had another second chance in life because when she died, um, they never wanted her to go, so they had to pray her back to life. So she lived again. Her inner beauty paid her. So there's always one reward or the other for, for possessing these attributes. We're done with talking about kindness and compassion, and we just move to the next point, which is she is. Hard working a woman with inner beauty is a woman that is hard working um there is no beauty in being lazy like there is no beauty in being idle no 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 there is no beauty the bible says in proverbs chapter 31 that the virtuous woman works willingly with her hands that means she is very excited to work she enjoys working the bible also says that she is like the merchant ships that that brings her food from afar that she wakes up early in the morning and provides food for her family her children those around her she does not eat the bread of idleness she clothes herself with strength and honor she is not an idle woman she hates being idle she gets busy she looks for something doing she does not go about lazing around gossiping around eating and watching movies she gets busy is one at one very big attribute of of inner beauty i know it is said that it is irresponsible for a man not to feed his family like his wife and his children and that's true the bible said that any man who cannot feed his family who cannot take care of his family is worse than an unbeliever you see but likewise any woman who cannot support her husband financially spiritually like you cannot even pray stay in the place of prayer on his behalf like um you just want to be sleeping around and, and eating and watching the tv all day not that you are sick not that you're a handicap there is nothing wrong with you. you are perfect in health not the situations around you and will not permit you to walk you don't just want to walk my dear you lack beauty and see you are not beautiful Forget the makeup and the pancake and the shape and all of that. No man likes a lazy woman. The Bible says an excellent woman is a crown to her husband. But the woman that causes shame is rottenness to his bones. Proverbs 24 verse 10. You end up turning that man into a nagging husband. He may not nag when he's with you. But he nags when he's with his friends. Go and get busy and see. Go and look for something doing. Stop lazing around. No man likes a lazy woman. You may say, eh, he wants me to stay at home. He says I should not work. See, even in that house you are, you can still do something. Just make sure you are not idle. 
like some ladies are already dreaming um one day i will feed the orphans i will clothe the naked i will sponsor the education of the less privileged ones with whose money do you want to do that your husband's money abi <laughs> okay listen sabita was able to feed the hungry and clothe the naked because she was a hard-working woman laziness and beauty have nothing in common go and get busy we are done with this point that takes us to the next point she is independent a woman that is hard working ends up being independent but a woman that decides to be lazy should be ready to be dependent all the days of her life Andy, cash on the beat.